Your story belongs here. You belong here. Your story belongs here. You belong here. You belong here. <laughs> you all belong here. I was one of those kids who was always singing and dancing. Like, I could never sit still. My parents were like, oh yeah, you're meant to be a star. And they would tell that to the family and anyone who was too close to them in the grocery store. They encouraged me to do choir and band and dance and school plays and everything to try to get my creative expression out. And they told me that those things had to be hobbies. They were extracurriculars and when I got older, I would be able to put that aside and do something practical with my life. I followed that for a while. My confidence started withering away because I started seeing all the shortcomings I had. That dream of being an actor felt so out of reach. I would look around and I wouldn't see people who looked like me unless they were the punchline of a fat joke or something racist. So when I applied to colleges, I applied as a sociology major. I was planning on just doing theater for fun. So I asked if it was okay for non-majors to take theater classes and I was invited to the theater department meeting before the first day of school. And the rest, as they say, is history. I changed my major and I got accepted into the BFA program and I decided to disappoint my parents with my whole chest. I felt my confidence slowly rise from the ashes because I realized I spent so much time in my life making myself smaller and quieter. And by the time I got to my junior year, I was starting to see some of my confidence come back and feel better about my abilities to be an actor. But then I had a really difficult challenge ahead of me because I found out that Girls on a Dirt Pile would be produced next year. That play was written by Susan McCulley, and I was so excited to read the rough draft of it. I fell so in love with the story, the characters, the world of the play, everything. It was one of those things that called me so strongly. I felt like I had to be a part of the story. When auditions rolled around, I was so determined to prove myself. When callbacks came around, I felt a lot less confident about that. We were told that the show would be very physically challenging. When I saw the other bodies in the room that I was comparing myself to, I was not confident that I would be cast. But I was. <laughs> I was shocked, excited. I did my summer workout program with all the other actors and I came to the first day of rehearsal stronger than I was before. Yeah, rehearsals were tough and they were really hard, but it was worth it. I wouldn't want to work that hard for anything else. We found out that we were going to perform at the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival. <laughs> it felt like all of our blood, sweat, and tears were finally validated, and we would be able to share that story with so many people. We were so excited. We packed up everything, threw it into some trucks. We head down to DC. The day before we were supposed to perform, we had to put everything back together piece by piece. As I was filling the middle part of the set with the little rubber pieces of dirt that we had. I was looking around and just admiring the beautiful newfound family that we created. There were electricians, you know, furiously focusing lights. I could hear the sound of all the power tools. I felt at home and I felt like I really belonged. When we performed the next day, I had this like elated tingly feeling inside that I can't even explain, but we were able to support each other through all the training and the learning, and now here we were doing the thing we loved together off campus for the first time. Now all of us are in professional productions in Baltimore and DC, still doing our thing together. Your dreams are possible and they can come true. You just need the support system that you'll find here to be able to do it.